Hi! In this video, we'll go over some tips and tricks for paper crafting projects using your cutting machine. We're using Cricut Design Space and a Cricut Maker for this example, but this general information will apply no matter which cutting machine and software you're using. We'll go over setting up your file and software, cutting your cardstock pieces, and a couple of general tips for assembling your project. I'm Michelle with Craft Genesis. If you're not familiar with us, we offer design files for cutting machines and laser cutting, and we have lots of designs for paper crafting. Each design is going to come with its own assembly photos or step-by-step -step instructions, so make sure to check out that information on the site for the specific design you're making. All right, let's get into it. Before you cut your design, there are a few things you'll want to set up in your software. Open your design file. The first thing you'll want to do is to make sure the overall dimensions are what you want. For your convenience, we've added size information to our design files that have been created to work best at a specific size. If there's no size note, you can just decide how big you want your design to be. Make sure everything is selected, then check the overall dimensions and adjust them if you need to. In this case, our dimensions already match the note, so we don't need to change anything. Next, we need to make a few adjustments to individual parts of the design. Make sure everything is selected, and then ungroup the elements. If there's a note in the file that's not part of the actual design, you can select and delete it at this point. If the design has any elements that are intended to be something other than cutting, we'll want to indicate that in the software. For example, our design has added scoring lines to make sure you can easily fold it in the right place. Select just the lines you'd like to adjust and change the operation to scoring. If your machine doesn't have a scoring tool, you can also just delete those lines and fold the pieces on your own later. If your design has drawing or foil elements, you can designate that at this point too. When you're done, select the elements that are part of the same piece and attach them together. Once you've made all your changes, you can preview your mats so you know what you'll be cutting in what order and what size paper to use. Now that our file is set up, we can move on to making our project. First, you'll want to pick out your cardstock. If you're making a greeting card like this one, a lighter cardstock around 65 pounds can be a good choice so your card doesn't get too thick when everything is folded together. If you're making something that's 3D or needs to be a little bit sturdier, then a heavier cardstock around 110 pounds tends to work well. You'll also need a cutting mat for your machine. We're using a medium grip mat. If you're cutting a very delicate design and you find that the paper tears when you try to peel it off the mat, you can try a light grip mat and see if that works better. Take the first piece of cardstock you'll be cutting and line it up with the grid on the mat, and then press it in place. If you're using a piece of cardstock that's smaller than your mat, make sure it covers the cutting area that you saw on the mat preview. Use a brayer to smooth the cardstock onto the mat. The last thing we need to do before we cut our first mat is to select our settings and tools. In your software, select the type of material you're cutting. Depending on your machine, you may also need to select the pressure. We've specially designed and tested our files to minimize any cutting issues. We recommend the setting that best matches your materials and adjusting from there if needed. You'll also want to make sure you have the right tool loaded onto the machine for each step. Watch your software and follow the prompts. For example, for this piece, we need the scoring wheel first. Load the tool you need into the machine. Then you can feed the mat into the machine. And you're ready to start cutting. If the piece you're cutting has different types of elements, like the cutting and scoring on this piece, watch your software and change the tool in your machine when it tells you to. When your design is done cutting, before you remove the mat from the machine, peel up a corner of your cardstock to make sure that it cut all the way through. If it didn't, you can just run the cut again. After your cutting is finished, you can remove the mat from your machine and then take your cardstock off the mat. What we've found works best is to take your mat with the cardstock and lay it face down on the table. Then peel back the mat, keeping the cardstock as flat as you can. Go slowly and watch to make sure the cardstock isn't tearing. And here's our finished piece. Repeat these steps for every mat to cut out all your pieces of cardstock. 
The special care our artists take to create and test the designs to minimize any tearing can really be seen in intricate pieces like this. If your design leaves a lot of small cardstock pieces attached to your mat, you can use tools that come with your cutting machine to help remove them. Now that we have all of our pieces cut out, we're ready to move on to assembly. These are a couple of general tips you can use when you're assembling most cardstock designs. Every design has its own specific steps, so make sure to check out the assembly photos or instructions for the specific design that you're making. If your machine scored a line on your piece, fold it along that line. You can run a bone folder or something smooth along the crease to make sure it's nice and flat. If you didn't score a line with your machine, you can do it manually. A great tool for this is a paper trimmer with a scoring blade attached instead of a cutting blade. I'll use this outer card as an example, even though it does already have a faint scoring line. Figure out exactly where you want your fold to go. I'm measuring to mark the center point of my card. Line it up in your paper trimmer and create your scoring line. Then you can fold your card. We're going to use a few different types of adhesive to assemble our project. We're going to start by using this 1 8 inch double-sided tape to attach the inner rectangle to the card. For areas where you have a little more space, a double-sided tape runner like this is convenient. If you're attaching a card lining like this, it works well to stick the back in place with both parts folded. Then add tape to the front and press the card closed to stick them together. You can also use liquid glue to stick your pieces together. Any glue with water in it has the potential to make your cardstock ripple up, so make sure to use a very small amount. We're using this glue with a fine point to stick the last piece on the front of our card. And here's our finished card! Thanks for watching! I hope this video helped you understand how to set up your file, cut out your pieces, and put your paper cutting project together. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos to help with your cutting machine and laser cutting projects, and check out our designs at craftgenesis.com.